Hi guys, it's Nikki, creator of Nikki's Homemade Craft. Today I would like to teach you how to make this egg popping chicken. It is super adorable. It has a hole underneath. Obviously, that's where you put your egg. And of course, you can also use this as an egg warmer. So, but the whole deal is that you put your egg in there and then you kind of hold it like this and then you squeeze it out. Just as a little fun thing, you know? And I also have here a little nest uh, for that I make for the chicken. You can get that um, pattern on my website. All of it is going to be on my website. The link is in the description right down there. Um, and it is really easy to make and very fast also. So let me show you exactly what you're going to need and then we'll get started. Okay, let me just kind of put it over here. All right. So I'm going to use Premier Yarns, Deborah Nova Everyday Yarn, and I have three different colors, technically four, but I'm not making this in the video because it's super duper easy. So just grab the tutorial on my website or the pattern on my website for the nest. This one is the, in the color Lemon, which I'm making the chicken out of. Then I have the color Flame Orange for the peak and then I'm using um, red heather but you can just use no more red I just happen to have red heather available in my stash so that's what I used with this part right here all right so let's get started oh I forgot you are also needing these little eyes right here I have a link down below if you're interested in getting those I have a big package that I bought on uh, Amazon and of course if you're making this for little children feel free to just use black yarn and make eyes I like sew eyes on there rather than using these plastic things all right I'm gonna put my plastic ones right in the nest and then I also use a five millimeter hook this is a furls crochet hook that I absolutely love and if you're interested in one also go ahead and go to my website or even there's a link below and you can grab your own one too I really really like these okay so let's get started so you're gonna start with your yellow or better your lemon yarn you're gonna make a magic ring <coughs> like that so this is how I make my magic ring I kind of wrap it around cross it over let go but hold the X right there where it was crossed kind of put my loop through and then put my finger below over there to hold it and now we're gonna make eight single crochets after chaining one so chain one and now eight single crochets One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <clears throat> and eight. Then you close up the hole. And now we're going into continuous rows. So we're going to use, I've got my scissors on the side here. Actually, I have a little piece of yarn that I'm going to use. <clears throat> so I use a little piece of yarn for as my stitch marker. So. You can use anything you wish to use for your stitch marker. That's just what I'm using. So because we're doing in continuous rows, there's no slip stitch until all the way at the end. <clears throat> so in the next row or round, I should say, um, we're going to now place one single crochet in the first stitch, then a single crochet increase. So that means two single crochets. And never repeat that. One single crochet, next one is two, then one, and then two, and then one, and two. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna now move my stitch marker upwards. I always put it right between the last and the first stitch. So now we're going to the next two rounds, which are just single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty
So two rounds of just single crochets. So we're shaping the heads, that's what we're doing right now. Now one more round. So as we currently don't do increases, you can see that the circle is bending now. Okay, so I'm going to just bend it outwards like this. All right, I'm going to pull my loop a little bit tighter there. <clears throat> so now we're going to the next one, and we're now going to do the opposite of what we just did in the second row, which means I'm going to decrease now because we're trying to make the neck part right here. Okay. <clears throat> So we're going to do one single crochet and now we're going to do a single crochet decrease. But I'm trying to do an invisible one. So I'm going to go through the front loop only, but I'm going to go through the second one as well. Okay, so let me show you. This is how you normally would do a single crochet decrease, right? So you pull two through of the, like one each of each stitch. Here we're just going through the front loop, but I'm also not just picking up the yarn and then going like this, because then you still see a gap. So I'm going to go through here, through the first, the front loop only of the first stitch. I'm going through the second one, front loop only, and now I'm going to pull through my yarn and just do a normal single crochet. That way it's an invisible single crochet decrease. Then a normal single crochet, and now we're doing the decreased, invisible decrease again. Going through the front loop only. Now a single crochet. Single crochet decrease, an invisible one. Single crochet. And one more invisible single crochet decrease. As you can see now, it looks very nice and neat. Okay, now we're going to go to round six, where we're going to do increases in every stitch. You should have 16 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, let's double check. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. All right. Now we're going to round number seven. We're going to start with one single crochet and then a single crochet increase. One single crochet one single crochet increase until the end. Okay, now we finished round seven. We're now going to round eight to 12. So 
in those rows of rounds 8 through 12 you're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch I will continue this and be right back once I finished round 12 so now that we've finished round 12 we're now going to start in rows we're just going to do now the um, tail <clears throat> in linked double crochets so linked double crochets prevents gaps between the double crochets so they're actually linked together we're going to make a long flat piece then we're going to fold it over and reconnect it and finish it up so let's do that <clears throat> so you're working in the front loop only because we're going to use the back loop later on to reconnect them okay you are going to crochet three chains go through the second one yarn over pull through go through the first stitch yarn over pull through well, front, front loop only and now you're going to finish up just a normal double crochet yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now you have that bar right here that's what we're going to use um, to yarn over. So go through that bar. Let me show you again. It's right there. Yarn over, pull through. That's your first. Then go through the um, same stitch because we're actually doing increases. So each stitch, each of the next five stitches has two linked double crochets. Finish it up like a normal double crochet. Okay? Now go through that bar again. So can you see the bars right here now? So go through the bar, yarn over, pull through, go through the next stitch, front loop only, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Go through the front horizontal bar, pull through, go through the same stitch, and finish it up like a normal double crochet. So that was two now. Two increases. So now we're going on the third one. I have a very detailed tutorial on my website on how to do the linked double crochet in rows and rounds. So in case this was too fast for you, go ahead and check it out. That's a very slow version of this. So we did two there. So we now did one, two, three. Now we're working on the fourth one. So now I'm going to work on the fifth one. So you should have 10 in the end, 10 linked double crochets. Okay, so this was the last one. Now yarn, uh, um, chain three and turn. Okay, make sure that I have my yarn kind of in a ball here. Okay, so you see now we have here those back loops. We're going to use those later on to reconnect. Okay, so now we're going to do another row. So you're going to go through the second chain of the look <clears throat> and then through both loops. Now we're just going to normally do one uh, linked double crochet in each stitch. So go through the first one and then finish it up like a normal double crochet. It's actually very easy. You just have to remember that you're not yarning over in the beginning, but rather than going through that horizontal bar and picking up a loop. And then finishing it up like a double crochet. That's the only difference. And that way you're linking your double crochets together. It's a very fun stitch. I have several other patterns on my website in case you're interested. I even have a tutorial on both my website and YouTube channel for the linked treble crochet. <clears throat> Alright. Alright, always double check your stitches. Alright, so now we did two rows we're going to work until we have six in total. 
So I'm going to come back once I finish my six so I can show you how to finish it up. Okay, so just keep on going, making your linked double crochets until you have six rows. Okay, I'll see you right back here. Okay, so now that you've finished six rows um, of this flap, we're now going to fold it over just like that. So just connect these. So you're going to sew this part later on together so it's kind of not open on the side unless you prefer that. But now we're going to go back here and now we're going to go and follow the line this way. It's just It's the normal circle that we're doing, right? Okay, so we're going to chain one and now we're going to connect two of these stitches to one of these, okay? So the easiest way to do is first to look, okay? So we have here one, two, three, four, five back loops. That's the, those are the ones that we're going to use, okay? So double check first. So we're going to do decreases by connecting them together. So let me show you how I did this. Okay, so I'm going to go through my first stitch. I'm going to go through the back loop here that we left behind. Okay, pull through. Now I'm going to go to my next one. I'm doing the same thing through the same back loop there. Okay, and now I'm going to go pull through two. Well, through three, I'm sorry about that. So going to the next stitch, going through the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, going to the next stitch, and the same loop. Now I pull through and you have three and then connect it. And then you do that all the way to the end. So you're going from ten stitches to five. Alright, last one. All right, and now you're just going to finish the round right here with single crochets. Okay, so you make sure that you go into the right one and just going to do single crochets until we hit our stitch marker again. Okay, so there should be one more stitch right here. I'm just because there's a little gap here, I'm just going to go through right here. I'm going to connect these just because I'm trying to prevent this gap. I think I pulled my chain a little bit long in the beginning. Okay, so I put my stitch marker right there. I have a little yarn barf going on here. I'm sure I can use my yarn. All right, that should be okay. Okay, so now we're going to go and go to the last round and that is doing a slip stitch. Slip stitch. And then one double crochet in the next stitch. Then a slip stitch, one double crochet, slip stitch, and you're just going to keep on going. So that provides us with a little bit of a texture at the end, so it looks like the chicken is sitting. So the slip stitches 
are made in one stitch and a double crochet is in the next stitch. Alright, now we're finished that part. I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to cut a little bit of a more generous piece because I want to sew this part up. Okay, so I'm going to fasten that off. Oops, there's a little knot right here. Can now remove your stitch marker. So this is how far we are now. And now we're going to work on sewing these parts up and then finishing up the head. Very easy. Okay, so now sewing it up is actually very easy. So you just have to make sure you can separate the yarns. You can pick two pieces of yarn. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm just going to weave it through and then sew this part together. So what I do is I like to use the mattress stitch. Okay, so what you do is you go always from the inside out. So always from the inside out. Doesn't matter how many you do. And then when you pull it in the end the yarn disappears. So if you would use a different yarn color, you would actually not see what you did, if you did it properly. So obviously I use this color because I don't want to even have the chance of seeing it. And I also have it here. So now I'm just going to weave it through. Don't pull too tight, otherwise you're going to make it look funky. Okay, so what I like to do is to make sure that I don't pull it too tight. I'll make a little knot right here. I'll hide it though. So, like that. And now we're just going to finish it up with the matcha stitch. So, you know, see the knot disappears. So that way I'm preventing it from pulling on this side. Okay. Just gonna connect it over here so it looks appropriately. All right. So there you go. So I'm going to fasten it off. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to weave in my end just yet. Because I notice that some people when they have different tensions, they tend to um, they tend to have um, a bigger hole right here or a smaller hole either way, but most of the time it's a bigger hole. So what you can do is if you feel like your ache is kind of just sliding out and you can't really squeeze it out, you're just going to go weave your, uh, your end right here all the way around and pull just a little bit so you can close up the hole, the gap a little bit. So if you look here, my hole is a little bit smaller and that's exactly what I did right here. So I weave my yarn all the way through around and then weaved it and then fastened it off after. So I'm going to make the hole just a slightly smaller. So what it does is then it allows the egg to be squeezed out rather than just slide right out. Okay, so I'm just going to let it hang right here. I'm going to take my needle off so it doesn't bother me. And I'll do that later. In fact, I can actually kind of tuck it in here so it doesn't bother me as we're finishing it up. Okay, so now we're going to use our 
um, orange yarn, which is called Flame Orange. Have to look where my yarn end is. Right there. Just gonna take a small piece of it. I don't need much of it. Where did my scissors go? Right here. I really don't need much. That's why I'm already cutting it. Okay, so we're simply making a slip stitch or slip knot, sorry. Okay, I should maybe hold it like this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can obviously attach your eyes first, totally up to you. I'm just going to attach um, the peak first and um, so what you want to make sure is that it's even, right? So what I do is I like to fold this and then know that I have to put it right here, okay? So I attach your yarn like that. It is roughly at the height of the third round, just so you guys know. That's roughly where I'm putting it. It's an estimate. Okay, so now you're going to chain one, you're going to slip stitch, you're going to do one single crochet, and you do another slip stitch. That's all. So fast enough. So when you did that slip st uh, that single crochet, it pr made that little um, pointy area right there. So it actually does look like it, okay? So I'm not going to weave in my end right now. I'm just going to leave it like that so that I can finish it up. I always like to weave in my ends at the end, okay? So now I'm going to like to attach my eyes. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, you can, of course, sew it on if you want to make sure that your children, let's say you have small children or you're, you know, selling it or so, um, that they're not having problems later on. So I have here some smaller eyes than I used over here. It's totally up to you. So you want to make sure that they're even on both sides. So kind of look that they're on the right, right height. Okay, so once I tuck them in, what I do is I kind of flip it. I, I'll weave in all these ends later, as I mentioned. And now you're going to take your little thing, okay, and then just push it through. And that locks it in place. Just like that, okay. And you're going to fold it back over, and there you have your eyes, okay. So that's the easy part. Now, of course, if you sew it, that might be a little bit trickier, but it's still doable. Not a big deal. Okay. Gonna leave that there. So now I'm going to work on the top part right there. So I'm going to use some of my red yarn right here, which is red heather. Also, we're just going to need a little bit of it. So I'm already going to cut it. Okay. So I'm going to just work on that crest. Okay. So roughly at the height of the peak. Just go over right there. By the way, if I'm pronouncing something wrong, it's because I'm foreign. I apologize. I'm gonna just attach it like that. Okay. Chain one. And now you're gonna do the same thing as you did over here, but you're doing it three times. I apologize for that jet flying over me. Okay, so did a chain of one. We're going to do a slip stitch. We're going to do single crochet, a slip stitch, single crochet, slip stitch, it can be a little bit trickier when it comes to the magic ring right there. So just pick one of the strands if it's possible. Just have to kind of pick it up because you pulled it really tight. Oh, 
Alright, it's kind of slipping. Come on, go through. There we go. Alright, that was a single crochet. And one more slip stitch. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, fasten off. I already had to cut it. So, and obviously you just weave it through here so that that yellow part disappears on that side, right? So, you have like three little peaks right there. Okay, so now that is done. Finished your eyes, you finished that. So let me just weave in my ends. I'll show you how I do it. It's totally up to you how you do it. I just like to go to the other side of this part and just weave it through so it looks pretty much the same as the other side. That's pretty good on this one. Let me cut that part. So the first one is done. Now we're going to do the second one. So just staying on that side so it looks all equal. Just gonna cut these in already. Oh, didn't cut that probably. Okay. Now let's do this one, and then we'll close up the hole in the bottom for a little bit, and then we're good. So this one I also just gonna go kind of like through back and forth. Now this is not intended for children, the one that I'm making right here, that's why I'm not weaving it in too much, just so you know. Okay. Okay. Looks already super adorable. I think I pulled it up here a little bit too far. As so you can see that I have a little bit more over here and I just pulled it a little bit far. It's not a big deal. So just make sure that you're not pulling it like me. Okay, so let me show you now what I mean, what I said earlier is that you can make the hole a little bit smaller. So you kind of just weave it through all the way around without pulling too much just yet. So now I don't have an egg right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it like this so I know how far to pull, but this works already pretty good, so you don't want to pull it too far, so kind of loosen it up just a tiny bit, and then you just fasten it off, that's it. And of course weave in the last little bit of your end, so I'm just going to tuck it for right now, because I'll weave that in later. And then you are done with your cute and adorable little chicken. How cute is this? Totally adorable. So it is a egg popping chicken. So you can put your egg right in here. You can use it as an egg warmer. And be sure to go to my website so you can find the pattern for this little cute nest. It is very fast and easy to do as well. And you can make as many chicken as you like. Different colors. Different you know, uh, crests, whatever you prefer. You can even make the, um, the tail a different color. 
and you kind of shape it like this and then you're ready to go with your chicken. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful on how to make these cute and adorable egg popping chicken. Please leave me a like, a comment behind and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I hope I see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!